Hey everybody, and welcome back. Uh, it is morning, so if I seem a little low energy right now, uh, it's because I'm still working on my first cup of coffee. It's not a small cup. <laughs> and uh, uh, thinking about the last year, uh, as many of you know, it was in January of last year that I first announced that I was going to be doing commission painting full time. And so now here we are a year later. And uh, I'm just thinking about where things have, have gone. So January was actually, in, in terms of uh, commission painting, not a huge month. Uh, I was still in transition from the game store, which is Greenfield Games in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Just reminded to do that periodically because uh, somebody recently told me that they had to sleuth out where the game store was, so I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> to mention it more. It's one of my New Year's resolutions. But anyway, uh, that was a transition month. I was still uh, winding down uh, our second store and winding up on uh, the commission painting. Uh, and essentially, I, I ended up doing commissions that I'd already taken previously. But it really took off, and I really appreciate uh, those of you who jumped right on board when I said that I was going to have a uh, full schedule available uh, for commission painting. And I think that was the most um, worrying point in the, uh, in the whole process. Because the, you know, making that leap is tough. And uh, I know a lot of people, well, not a lot, but a, a number of people have asked me questions about uh, becoming a, a commission mini miniature painter full time. And uh, I've always said that the toughest part is, is making sure that you have enough work to, to do it. I mean, you know, you could be good and you might have some clients, but if you don't have steady clients, then you're just going to run out of work. It, I think that has been the, uh, the thing that has really been made very uh, apparent to me is that you completely lose your safety net. You don't really understand what it's like having or losing that safety net from a regular job where you get a guaranteed, you know, two days off a week and, you know, maybe a week or two of vacation a year. Uh, and you really appreciate that when you no longer have somebody else telling you that's okay to do and that really uh, you only get paid for the work you do as a commission painter. Uh, which means that if you are three weeks into the month and you haven't had any time off, and uh, but you still have things to do that month, it, it's not like you can just take the time off. I mean, well, okay, that's not true. You can, but there are consequences. You know, it's, it's more direct consequences, unlike at a regular job, at a regular 9 to 5. It's like, yeah, 5 o'clock, I'm out of here kind of regardless of, of what else is going on around you. Plus there's other people around to sort of pick up the slack. And you know, when you're commission painting on your own, there's no, there's nobody else to pick it up. It's all on you. So that part became very apparent. Uh, I've had many weeks and even months where uh, I not really had any days off. Uh, luckily for me, uh, it turns out that's okay. Uh, and that is the other thing that I've told people who have been uh, interested in becoming commissioned miniature painters is that you got to love it. If you don't love it, uh, it's, it's hard. I mean, just imagine that, having a job where, you know, you might be working uh, 10 hours a day, seven days a week, and you just got to keep going because you got work to do. Uh, if you get sick, well, all that work is just piling up behind you. Uh, I actually got lucky in that I only had 
uh, one period of illness in the last year, and I think it was about four days in total, probably three days, two or three days where I just couldn't paint. And so not only was I miserable because I was sick, but I was miserable because I knew that I needed to be working. I needed to get that work done. So it's tough. Um, in any case, that, uh, that all became quickly apparent, but I realized I could do it. So it wasn't that big a deal, but it's not ideal for the long term. Uh, for the long term, I'd like to, to find myself into a more stable, regular position. And part of that is figuring out my, uh, and, and I've been doing this over the past year, but figuring out how much work I can do, how much I need to charge for it. Um, I know I have lost a few customers over the course of the year because I've had to raise my prices some because I realized that uh, at what I was charging at the beginning uh, was not going to be sustainable. But, you know, you do what you can. So um, the nice thing is, though, that uh, I've managed to pick up a handful of customers who have consistently giving me, given me work over the past year, which has been fantastic. Uh, it adds a bit of stability to what would other, otherwise be kind of a terrifying process of trying to find new work. Uh, you guys know who you are, and I love you. Thank you. So overall, things have gone pretty smoothly. Uh, I, I can't say that there's been much in the way of disasters. Uh, I have dropped the ball on a couple of projects. Uh, I've had one customer in particular where I, I seemed like I was constantly uh, fumbling things, and, and I don't know why that was, but as of right now, all caught up. <laughs> uh, there was one real disaster, though, and that came late in the year, and um, I know I mentioned this in another vlog, but it was, it was a pretty, pretty devastating thing that happened, uh, and that was, I did a, a convergence army for one of my customers, shipped it out, everything went fine, uh, but apparently there were a number of thieves in the area who had been targeting packages left on doorsteps, and uh, his army just disappeared. So that was, like I, I was devastated and I did what I could to try and get the word out that, and that hopefully he would be able to find his army and get it back. But as far as I know, that never happened, which really sucks because my guess is that whoever stole it probably grabbed it, opened it up, looked at it and went, I don't know what the hell this is, and then threw it all away. Uh, something similar happened to my son several years ago where he lost, his, in fact, it was a, it was a war machine army as well. But he ended up getting it back, but unfortunately it had been battered and broken along the way, and that caused him to just drop the game entirely because he just couldn't, he just couldn't deal with it. So uh, I certainly understand how devastating that must have been. Plus, you know, it was not an inexpensive project. Uh, it was a full convergence army and he had just purchased all of the things specifically for me to paint them. Uh, yeah, I can't even imagine. So not a lot of us have a, so much disposable income that we can just dump that amount of money and not have it hurt. So one thing that's been really cool about the past year was the diversity of projects that I've gotten. I've you know obviously done some of your standard uh, 40k fantasy war machine and what have you but I've also done a number of board game projects um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second uh, as well as some display figures like the night models superheroes uh, and some uh, I want to say dinosaur kits but they're not really dinosaurs when they're mammals but st specifically, the uh, Alchemy Models resin uh, kits. I just did a recent diorama 
featuring a, uh, uh, a mastodon in a tar pit. And that was, that was super cool. Uh, I used to do projects like that back in the, uh, back in the 1990s. And it had been a while since I'd done something of that size. So super fun, very cool. Uh, and I really appreciate all of the, uh, all of the various projects that people have sent along. So one of the things I want to talk about is the, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, this has actually been a very important part of my business. Uh, it was really started out from the beginning as a way to reach out and show people what I could do. And uh, it's, it's done that in, uh, in, in great fashion and continues to grow. I mean, uh, an amazing amount. So I'm looking at stats right now. The number of subscribers has more than doubled in the past year. And uh, the channel has actually been around for, well, technically since about 2010. Uh, no, I'm sorry, technically since about 2007. But uh, I didn't start using it for painting videos until about 2010. But that's uh, a number of years where it sort of has been kind of languishing and slowly growing. Uh, but there has been kind of an explosion of growth, uh, which has been very helpful and very interesting uh, in that it <laughs> I've become recognizable to a very certain group of people, uh, including, so let me just give you a, a, a funny story about that. Uh, I think it was last weekend, uh, I was at the store to drop off that diorama that I recently met, I just mentioned and was hanging out with friends at the store and this is an unusual thing for me these days uh, ever since I started doing commission painting my time at the store has dropped to a, a very minimum and so uh, at, whereas there was a time when I might be you might be expected to find me there, you know, reasonable chance of finding me there on any given day. Uh, now, you're pretty much not going to find me there. But on this day, I was there. And while I was there, uh, a gentleman came up and introduced himself. Uh, hey, Jason. <laughs> and uh, mentioned that he'd been watching my videos and that he had actually gone on a little three-hour drive to come to the store specifically because he'd seen my videos and uh, I'm, I'm pretty much always uh, surprised by that kind of thing and that's not the first time somebody's done that before uh, it was super lucky that I happened to be there at all and that he was there on the day it's not like people do that every day and so I was likely to run into somebody <laughs> looking to find me uh, on the one day that I happened to be there uh, but I'm always pleased. I'm always pleased that, that people are watching this. Unlike the very first time that happened to me where I was instantly embarrassed that somebody had seen my videos. And literally, uh, same kind of situation where somebody had come up to me at the store and said, hey, don't you do those videos? And I, I immediately thought, oh my God, people are watching those videos. <laughs> Uh, but if I go to a convention or something, uh, it is not uncommon for me to be recognized now, uh, which is which is very interesting. You, you get that sort of just slight taste of what it might be, uh, what it might be like to be a celebrity, which I am not in any way a celebrity. Uh, so yeah, that's that's been interesting. Um, but as some of you may have noticed. Uh, the channel has taken a little bit of a turn recently, and I'm hoping it doesn't upset anybody. And if it seems like it might, um, I might start a second channel. But I'm speaking specifically of the video game related videos that I've done. And when I started doing those, my first thought was that I would just start a new channel. But then I realized that I already have an audience that may be interested in these things. And, and what I'm hoping is that I'm not going to turn any of you off that aren't interested in those videos because you don't have to watch them if you don't want to. Uh, 
but I would really love to hear some feedback on this as to whether or not this is a, a, a major issue, issue for you one way or another. And for those of you who haven't watched those videos and are wondering why I'm doing those videos, uh, let me just explain a little bit. Um, I recently started playing uh, XCOM because my son had been playing it a lot and I'd just been reminded how much I love the game and that game to me is very much like a miniatures game and so when I'm playing it I get that same I get the same rush uh, it's a tactical game has a campaign system in many ways to me it's like it's like the perfect miniatures game and uh, but it's one that I can play on my own and still get a kind of a rich deep experience with it and so, uh, because I also consume a lot of uh, video game videos, I decided to try my hand at uh, making some. And they've been well received for those who watch them. And they're not my most watched videos by any stretch, but I really enjoy doing them. Uh, and so, but I've also, <laughs> that also means that I've gotten back into video games a little bit more, but really on a, I want to say on a limited basis, but in the evenings when I'm done painting, I do spend quite a bit of time playing them now. Uh, so it's either, uh, so I've been playing XCOM uh, Enemy Within, and for Christmas I got a copy of Mordheim, City of the Damned, which many of you may know is a miniatures game, but it is also a video game. And my son had actually had that one for a while, and I'd been keeping it at arm's distance because I didn't want to get wrapped up in it. But when I got it as a gift, I had to at least try it out. And of course, once I tried it out, I realized, oh, this is pretty cool. And so I'll probably be doing a video on that. I'm gonna at least do a review in the near future. And don't get mad, it, it, it is relevant to you in some way, perhaps. <laughs> uh, if only because these games are both representations of uh, what is to me a miniatures game. And then, of course, in February, XCOM 2 comes out. And when that comes out, I'm probably going to do a campaign video on that, maybe a review video. Don't get upset. <laughs> but again, uh, I may eventually split this off into another channel if it looks like there's a big enough divide between uh, those of you who come here looking for painting videos and those of you who come here looking for video game videos and um and those of you who are subscribers through patreon know that i do not uh run the video game videos through patreon because that's not what you signed up for specifically so i'm separating those two things out if i am going to put those through patreon it'll be through a separate patreon but i'm not going to do that yet not until those things have a more robust following than they have right now. But I'm enjoying it, so I'm gonna keep doing it one way or another. Uh, but please, if you have feelings about this, let me know. So as long as we're talking about XCOM, let's talk a little bit about Kingdom Death Monster. And at first you're thinking, wait, how are those two things related? I will get to that. Uh, so yeah, this year has been, or at least the second half of this year has been the year of Kingdom Death Monster for me. And, uh, I have done, so I, I, I'm pretty sure I've done more Kingdom Death Monster projects than I have done Doom projects, uh, in the entire time I've been doing, um, commission painting. And that's saying a lot because I've done a lot of Doom miniatures over the years, uh, it's one of those weird things I'm known for just because when people search for doom, my miniature, my painted miniatures come up quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> but Kingdom Death Monster has been kind of crazy in that there's so many people that have it. So there's a lot of people who are looking for it. And clearly if you could afford to buy the game in the first place, you know, you might be, uh, you, you might have an income that means that you could afford to have them painted. And, and let me say, they are really, for the most part, beautiful minis, and I've really enjoyed doing them. And at this point, I've thought I might, if I'd known that I'd be doing this mini uh, 
over the course of the year, I would have assumed at the beginning that I'd get tired of it, but I, I haven't been. And it's actually been interesting because uh, on the one hand, I can, um, I don't have to think as much prior to starting painting. And for those of you who don't know it, deciding how you're going to paint something can sometimes be a significant chunk of time. And so if you can just go in knowing that, hey, this is how I've done this in the past, I can just jump in and do it again, great. But also at the same time, uh, I can experiment with things where I went, well, I liked this last time, but I didn't like that. So why don't we try this time? And that way, I mean, everything that I do for everybody is unique in some way or another. Uh, and it has allowed me to do a lot of experimentation. Um, and I think the white lions, for me, are the most uh, visible um, examples of that because they're subtle um, they, and they all are sort of variations on a theme, but they're all variations on white. And uh, if you've never spent a significant amount of time trying to paint something that was essentially white, you wouldn't think that there would be that many variations to it, but there are. I mean, there can be as many variations to white as there can be to anything else. Um, the difference is that the, the differences can be, the difference is that the differences are, okay, that was, that's clunky. Anyway, uh, the variations can be very subtle and yet make a big difference. So uh, that's been interesting and fun. And how does that relate to XCOM, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. Uh, I don't actually have the game. So <laughs> uh, my son and I have discussed it a bit and we've, we've watched a lot of reviews and uh, we both came to the conclusion that in many ways, Kingdom Death Monster is the XCOM of board games. It has a tactical game, which is not as robust as, as XCOM, but it is, you know, it's a tactical game and it's, it's interesting in its own right. Um, but it also has this deep campaign system as well and it makes those two pieces work together uh, extremely well from everybody that we've heard from and so in that way is is very very much like XCOM and the funny thing is shortly after we came to that conclusion on our own uh, somebody else I believe on the channel mentioned that as well that that Kingdom Death Monster was very much like XCOM, in their opinion. So uh, <laughs> it's funny because it's kind of made me want the game more, but there is no way I'm going to be buying that game. Uh, and that's, that's too rich for my blood. I, not that I don't spend that much on games, but I like to do it a little at a time. I like to be able to sort of sneak my way into the uh, large investment. I don't like to have to do it all at once. So in, uh, in looking at the channel, one thing has become perfectly clear to me, and that is people seem to love the repaint videos for X-Wing. <laughs> uh, they are by far the, the most watched videos on the channel. I would really like to do more, and I may do more in the near future because uh, the amount of work I got at the beginning of the year has been very slim, which that happens. It's, it's happened every year, December, uh, is when my work pretty much plummets to almost nothing. I don't want that to be the case though, because I still need to pay the bills. Uh, but I really do enjoy doing the, uh, the X-Wing repaints. They're, they're fun little projects. And I would actually like to experiment with doing, um, some actual lighting, uh, adding LEDs and maybe in the future doing some stuff with, uh, with Raspberry Pi as well. But, you know, one thing at a time, I think the LA LEDs will be uh, just the first step and then we'll move forward from there. I think my next big project is going to be um, the uh, Imperial Assault Shuttle. It's the one with the, the TIE Fighters. I think I'd like to do that as a conversion to, um, to a freighter, which is those were originally supposed to be freighters. And so one of my thoughts is the, the paint job would be more freighter-like, 
maybe with a, uh, a logo on the side, uh, you know, a little stripe of color, just you know, something to, to really give that impression of it being a, uh, uh, a freighter and not an imperial ship. But what I would really like to do, and this would, this would be a little farther down the road, is to create uh, storage containers to go where the uh, TIE fighters sit. And that would probably require 3D printing, which I don't have a 3D printer, but for a project like that, I could probably get away with using Shapeways. So all of those things, like this could be one project that I do over a longer period of time. So the repaint and the lighting would be two parts of that. And then creating the, um, the containers would be another part. Um, and then later on, if I figured out a, what I might want to do uh, with Raspberry Pi, and I'm thinking about like maybe sound effects or um, lighting effects, uh, that would be something that I could do farther down the road. So just something to think about, you know. Uh, like I said, the repaint videos have been super popular, so got to think about it. Speaking of repaints, uh, something else I've been thinking about really diving into. Uh, I have been on and off sending out stencils uh, to people based on the stencils that I created for my Imperial shuttle. And I think I'm gonna try and to expand that a little bit more into a more, uh, into an actual store, maybe just using Etsy, where people could just go buy uh, the stencils that I create. And I think to start with, I'd probably focus on the uh, X-Wing ships and, and stencils for those, but I could also do custom stencils as well. So. Something to think about. Um, I, I want to do that in the near future. I'm, of course, thinking about that more now because the work is slow. Uh, but I also want to get to a point where I'm, uh, I'm creating things that I can kind of do in bulk and then sell over time. Uh, all these things just sort of add up, uh, add to my, uh, add to my bottom line. So it, it's all helpful. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know. So I think that's going to wrap it up for now. Um, it's been a crazy year, and thank you to everybody who has contributed into making it a better year. Uh, those of you who uh, subscribe to the videos, those of you who subscribe via Patreon, uh, and those of you who have given me commission work over the past year, thank you so much. I am available for more work in on short notice right now. Uh, so if you've got some stuff for Christmas and you're like, I need to get this painted, let me know right now, seriously, today, today, uh, assuming you're watching this today. Well, you know, really anytime today, whether that today is tomorrow or today is next year, tomorrow, today, then all of those would be good. Any of those times, contact me. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, if you like this video, as usual, like the video, uh, and if you want to make sure that you see these videos in the future, subscribe. And if you want to support these videos in a more robust fashion, do it via Patreon. And remember, I don't run the video game videos through Patreon. No worries about that. It's just the painting videos and this vlog and, you know, other related reviews and such. Uh, but that's going to do it for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you on the next one. Bye.